wants to go in front of AMS, me or anybody else. Uh, and so I think what you're going to find when we go through 2010 and into 2011, there's not going to be these reserves, these fat reserves out there left to be released. We've had four years of no rate and or rates going down. Uh, I don't know about you, but nobody can withstand this forever. Um, and think of a cat or two, and think of what's happening already in 2010. I was having a cocktail the other day with one of the reinsurers and know a guy pretty well, he said, Richard, we just had a $65 million loss uh, with the earthquakes in Chile. And multiply that times the storms in Europe, the other earthquakes that we've seen. And the reality of it is uh, the, the money that the reinsurance market has allowed us to maintain a fair level of stability is drying up. It wouldn't shock me at all that you saw in July, if the companies had July one renewals, that it's going to start to inch up. And as all of this comes forward, when we look into 2011, it's my opinion, humble as it may be sometimes, that I think we're going to have to start to see some rate movement in the market. My opinion. Uh, you'll probably read an article tomorrow saying just the opposite. Uh, you have to make money, uh, and the agents, the agencies, the rating agencies know that. Uh, we've had our share of trips down to AM Best, I can tell you. Back from the B plus plus days, the A minus days, back up to the A days, that we were wearing a bat down to A and best and, and telling our story. And, and I can tell you, the last time down, the thing that surprised me the most was that they were not only looking at a five year level of profitability, they wanted to look at a 10 year level of profitability. So every time you think that you were close to being out of the woods, uh, they would come back to you and take a look at your marketing plan. And, and the comment that I heard more than anything else was that we are watching very closely those companies that are growing too fast. Because they're not stupid. They get it. That they understand that there's only one way that a company can grow too fast. And that's because they're not charging enough premium for the business they're putting out in the books. I'm going to leave you... Uh, with my 2011 philosophy, a couple of current topics, and I've only got a second on each. Agent compensation, I probably said more about that than anybody in this room, and, and I tell you the reason I do it, it aggravates me. Uh, there's no reason in the world that this should have started in the first place. Uh, I know that change of regimes, as you know, and, and I would hope that the current superintendent lends a sympathetic ear to what's going on here. Uh, I, I've read the philosophy of the PIA, uh, of the big guy, of the Council of Insurance Brokers, and I, and I can tell you that we have had numerous conversations on, on the board of PCI, uh, and, and it's been the position of the PCI uh, that this was never legal to start with. Uh, and I have stayed in a very strong position. So I, I would say uh, align yourselves with these groups. Uh, make sure that they're getting their comments in too because uh, this, this should not be just an agency issue. Uh, it, it should be a company issue too. Uh, we have said all along that we have no problem with disclosure in the form of limited disclosure that a company can easily put on its debt page, we pay an agent commission, we pay an agent profit sharing, and if you need further information beyond that, you have the ability to contact your agent. It could be something that simple. I know people don't agree with me all the times on that, but I, I will tell you, that I think if you went to the company level at that and said, this is as simple as it gets, maybe this thing could get done. I, I, I would hope it gets done. It would be more simple. Uh, enough said on that, I know you probably read enough about it, you don't need me. Uh, no fault, uh, I am really glad to see that the agents are getting on board with the no fault issue. Think of this for a minute, last year there was $229 million in fraud and no fault last year in New York 
state. I don't know about you, but we're pretty honest with policy while we're sitting in this room. I was going to put in a fraudulent claim, but think of it. $229 million. Uh, something needs to get done. Uh, I, I can tell you, we're not an auto writer. We used to be an auto writer. We're not an auto writer. But it, it aggravates me uh, to see that nothing can get done on this in New York State. I, many of you have been around this before. We've all gone to the mountaintop where something was going to be done, and then somebody lets the air out of it. I, I would hope this time around that everybody's got it in order that we can get something done. Uh, on the feds, I would say, think about federal flood for one second. Um, just think about it for a second. Uh, the one thing that I would tell you that uh, we take a hard look at a regional company level, we want no part of it. Uh, and we're glad to see that the agents associations are very vocal with that. Coastal, uh, somebody will probably take a gun to me later when I say this, but uh, be careful what you wish for. Uh, over the years, many of the coastal markets have suffered. Think about Florida, think about Mississippi, think about Louisiana, think about what happened in Massachusetts with several of the carriers over there. Think about the carriers that withdrew a lot of business from Connecticut. And the reality of it is, why not? Like it or not, certainly there are, there certainly could be some better ways to do things. Uh, has been a very stable market. We've had companies come in, fill in the cracks where companies have gone out. We've had a very active ENS market in Long Island. And I, I, I'm afraid that if, if things get too, too particular where you start squeezing companies that may not have standard deductibles that other companies are using or different languages because they have to be ENS carriers, that my fear is that you could up upset the apple cart. Uh, so be careful with that. Uh, uh, it's just a word of warning from somebody that's seen a very steady market. We've been riding long on the homeowners since the 60s. Uh, and you know, I'm steady. You know, we're not out there with some great big apple cart, we're steady. And there's a lot of other companies like this. So please be careful with that. Uh, on segregated surplus, which some of you have heard about from the department, that's probably the worst idea I have ever heard in my entire insurance career. And I told that to the superintendent to know about 50 times, and he finally, finally took another job so he could get away from me saying that to him every, every time. Uh, I call segregated surplus Russian roulette. Uh, think of a small company that the department says, all right, you've got $50 million in surplus. I want you to put 15 of it over here for cap reserves. So now the small company says, well, you, my cap reinsurance just went up by $400,000. I think I'll just rely on my segregated surplus over here. Think what happens to that company if you have a storm. Uh, I, I just do not think it's a good idea. Uh, one of the things, and this will be the last thing I have to say today, and something that caught me a bit by surprise the other day, is that the rating boards are taking a very hard look at all the rating plans that we operated, not just in New York, but in other states throughout the nation. I, I sat through one of these actuarial things the other day, and I, I almost fell off my chair. This is the guy's not as true, but it was a company out in Ohio. And this actuary gets up and he said, we had nine rating plans or rating territories for homeowners in the state of Missouri. They now have 300. So think of New York State with 300 different rating territories. And, and, and honestly, I'm afraid we're going to see more and more of this. And, and I don't know where this is going to go. The rating bureaus, AIS in particular, uh, is going from one base rate, uh, basically looking at fire, to nine categories for rating and risk. So it is just going to become very complex. And you know, we as company people and agents, I think, are going to be in for a bit of surprises.